Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you once again for this last session, if I understand it well. And today I'd like to talk to you about the various components of a blended learning course. Now, since you are going to set up your own course, it would be good to have some form of checklist. And um, the checklist I'm using is the one that we have developed at the Institute of Distance Education here in Eswatini. Uh, but it is adapted largely from the Commonwealth of Learning Blended Course Learnability Evaluation Checklist, also from the Regional Community of Practice Quality Assurance Guidelines in Open and Distance Learning, another document from 2019, and a little bit, a little influence was uh, from uh, the online blended learning course quality checklist, which was prepared by Afsane Sharif. So in my short presentation today, I'm going to talk to you about the various components. They are uh, six in number but perhaps you can add others. If we can talk about that at the end of the presentation. Course overview and introduction, course goals and learning objectives or learning outcomes, depending on how you want to call them. Assessment, course materials, learner engagement, learner support services, or rather learner support resources. Okay, when it comes to course overview and introduction, you should check that you have a short and clear description or a video about the blended course and that this is available online. You need to explain to your learner what are the various components of your course and you need to state what is the prerequisite knowledge and what are the skills they should have uh, before starting the course. That also goes for the technical skills. Um, they must be clearly stated and a link must be provided to the course outline. Course schedule with the topics, assignments and due dates is another important information that must be given from the onset. Still on the course overview and introduction, you should explain what your expectations are about all the different types of assessment. You should talk about netiquette. Remember, we talked about it briefly uh, in the online discussions, in the chat, in the email, uh, any other type of communication that is available to your learners must be stated clearly. There must also be a link to the course or institutional policies. We talked about institutional policies last week. So remind yourself about perhaps an open educational resources policy or an uh, information and communication technology policy or any other policy that is linked to your course, you should link it. And there should be a little introduction or an icebreaker activity for your learners so that an online community can be formed. Second component is the course goals and the learning outcomes or objectives. So you must make sure that there's clear alignment between your goals and your objectives, that your objectives or your outcomes are described in terms of what your learner will be able to do when he's finished or when she's finished with the course. And then uh, the various blends with what will be done online, what will be done in a face-to-face -face setting. And these must all be aligned to your learning objectives. And remember, we've talked about Bloom's taxonomy, so that's also a very useful uh, list to have handy when you are preparing your course. Then with regard to assessment, Again, we have to have that alignment. Uh, there should be various opportunities for self-assessment and practice, uh, and it must be on an ongoing basis. So no, not only summative um, assessment, but a lot of formative assessment during the week, during the semester, during the time when you are working with your students. You must um, have a structure where you can give your students feedback and make sure that you have clear instructions. Your assessment activities must cover a range of cognitive domains. And again, Bloom's taxonomy is a useful um, list to look at. Then with regard to course materials, you must make sure that all supplementary materials for the face-to-face -face lectures are provided in your learning management system, in our case, in Moodle. 
perhaps you want to um, present these, well, no, you should present them in a consistent and logical structure and layout. So make sure that it's all um, well structured and presented without errors. I think that's a major thing when it comes to quality assurance. We often still find courses with grammatical errors, language errors, or even, you know, factual errors. So let's make sure that we have none of those. With the course material still, your content should use relevant, accurate and up-to-date examples. Um, if you have open educational resources that you have used, you must make sure that they are attributed clearly. And uh, if you have any synchronous sessions, you must record them and keep them available for your learners so that they can go back to them time and time again. With regard to learner engagement, then, there are the discussion forums that promote interaction. Um, it must be aligned to your learning outcomes. Uh, everything must be clearly articulated. Online and classroom activities must be distinguished clearly and your students must easily find where the communication or activity tools are. The forums, the wiki, the blogs, anything that you are using must be clearly indicated and easy to find for your learner so that he or she can engage fully the last component is the learner support resources, um, technical support, where must your student go if they have issues, um, academic support systems, if there are library services, if there is peer tutoring, perhaps there's a program coordinator or a departmental head, those are all, uh, that is all information that must be clearly shared. Um, your course instructions must answer basic questions related to anything they need to do within your course. And there must be guidelines or links to resources on how a student can do well in an online or a blended environment. Because remember, this is something that is quite new to our learners too, so we need to guide them as much as possible. Finally, contact information for your teachers, your lecturers, your instructors, your tutors, your mentors, all that has to be easily found by your learners. This is where I end for today. I would like to thank you once again for your attention and remind you that if there's any questions, you can always get in touch with me and I wish you well in the rest of your uh, virtual learning pedagogy course. Bye-bye.